Hey guys, so uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a <laughs> manual blood pressure on Eliana, my patient here. Uh, so a couple of things that are important to note when we are doing manual blood pressures. The first one is how to work this little dial. I don't know if you can, how closely you can zoom in, but this is probably the trickiest part for students to learn how to uh, use when they are beginning manual blood pressures. So the way that I like to hold the bulb is to hold it so that I can squeeze with the palm and these three fingers, and then I control this dial with my thumb and my forefinger. So the first time um, that you go to pump, you're gonna wanna make sure that this valve is pulled all the way, rolled between your thumb and your forefinger, all the way backwards towards you, because that means that the valve is closed. And I'm gonna try to see if I can zoom in here and show you the little hole. I don't know, can you zoom in on that? Might I don't know. No, nope, I can't see it. But there's a little hole underneath this dial. And that is what we were trying to close by rolling this uh, valve all the way backwards. And then as we pump up, we are going to open it by rolling this valve very, very gently and very uh, carefully and slowly, small amounts, forward. Now, the more that you roll this forward, uh, the faster the air will deflate from the cuff after it is pumped up. So you wanna get really used to, before you go trying to take blood pressures on your patient, you wanna get really used to rolling this valve back and forth between your thumb and your forefinger so that you kind of get a feel for how uh, that valve is, uh, how fluid that valve is or how stiff that valve is so you know how much to roll it back and forth when you're deflating the cuff. All right, so back to our patient. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your patient doesn't have a preference for arm. Do you have a preference for arm? Uh, no. Have you had a mastectomy, fistula, any uh, AV grafts or anything in either arm? Those no. are all reasons why you could not take a blood pressure um, on a specific arm. So if they've had any of those things, you wanna avoid taking a blood pressure on that arm. But since she hasn't, we are gonna go with your, we'll go with this one. What is this, your left arm? My right. Your right arm? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you wanna do, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I just trust you. So what you wanna do, is uh, go up from the patient's uh, pinky, did that tickle? <laughs> and uh, follow her pinky up and locate the patient's brachial pulse and kind of feel for the bounding back at you. Oh, found it. And that is where we are going to put the uh, marker here where it says artery marker, artery index marker, that is where we are going to put that. So let me get this all straightened out and turned around here. All right, you good? Just relax your arm for me. All right, so have the patient relax their arm I'm gonna put my valve and the ball down. You're gonna put your stethoscope on and place it over that pulse point and you're gonna hold it with your fingers, not with your thumb, so that you don't pick up the um, uh, radial pulse in your thumb. So you want to put your stethoscope there. I'm gonna put this on to record it so I can let you listen to her pulse in a little bit. All right. Hold that for me for a second. All right, so you wanna pop up to about 180. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I like to go about 180, 190. And then you slowly start to let your air out. Okay. 
See what happens when you open it too much? It goes too fast. about five millimeters of mercury per s every couple of seconds. And then once you have your diastolic number, you can go ahead and let it the rest of the way out. So her blood pressure ended up being about 110 over 80. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. And that's my normal. I don't know if you noticed, um, but you may have been able while you, you were watching the dial to see it jump a little bit. Um, and that's normal while you're watching the dial, but you do not want to rely on that as an indicator for blood pressure. Um, you always want to make sure that you are only recording blood pressure measurements with the numbers that you have actually heard. So uh, I'm going to try to upload.